There are so many cool indie paint brands in the world, but I'm sure we all face the same question. Are they worth the money? Today, I'm talking about the pros, cons, and my thoughts on four indie paint brands. This video is sponsored by Shield Wolf Miniatures. War Colors. First, I borrowed these from a friend and did not read all of the instructions. There are one coat base layer paints that one should apply before applying any of the other layer paints, which I did not do on my first time around. However, since I am sure I am not the first, last, or only person to make this mistake, I am going to talk about my experience overall, including the issues I had when technically painting it wrong. War Colors offer dozens of paints ranging across the hue and value spectrum, allowing you to create a seamless gradient from dark to light for nigh every color on the rainbow. The paint comes in a variety of opacities, from base layers to glazes and inks, as well as finishes like metallic, pearl, and fluorescent. This paint brand seeks to take all of the guesswork out of miniature painting and instead package a paint for each individual step you'll need along the way as you are painting. War Colors runs for $2.50 USD per bottle. Pros. Like I talked about in my intro, one of the first things that stands out to me is the wide range of paints available in this paint brand. If you are a new painter who knows what colors you want to work with but isn't sure how to create highlights and shadows for those colors, then having the ability to buy these pre-made sets will probably be perfect for you. These paints are already quite thin, so no need to worry about that here. They also thin down to a great consistency. Cons. Like I said, I'm sure I'm not the only one who has skipped over the one coat base paint and gone straight to the layer paints. And trying to achieve full opacity with just the layer paints is hard. They are very translucent to the point that I would almost call them a glaze straight from the bottle. Before I realized you needed to have an opaque base coat before applying the layer paints, I globbed the paint on trying to achieve opacity and then later saw that the paint had cracked as it was drying. I also found that these paints just did not want to put down an even layer. Lastly, doing feathering and wet blending with these paints was a bit of a nightmare. Every brush stroke was visible and it dried incredibly unevenly. The paint just wanted to coagulate and stick together and wasn't really interested in being feathered. My opinion. Unless you are interested in specifically having a ton of unique glazes, you can skip this paint. There are so many better paints out there, and I personally recommend learning how to make glazes yourself with whatever paints you already have, instead of buying 50 pre-made glazes. But again, if you're someone who knows what colors you want to work with, for example an army and you want to have all those pre-made steps, then this is great. But for me, I would much rather learn how to do it the right way and save my money. Green Stuff World. Green Stuff World's acrylic paints are highly pigmented with a gel medium that helps the paint glide over every surface you paint on. They have a huge range of colors from basic colors, neon paints, inks, and even highly unique color shifting paint. Their color range is so large that I guarantee you can find any color you are looking for and probably find colors you didn't know you needed. The bottles hold 17 milliliters and cost $3.50 USD per bottle with sets for 20 to 25. Pros. Because of their gel medium, Green Stuff World paints are ready to go right out of the bottle and can be thinned down to a glaze with ease. They really do glide across any surface and are opaque enough to only require two layers for full opacity. These paints also feather out quite beautifully and layered up just as well. Cons. My biggest complaint with these is that they sometimes sink into the recesses and dry unevenly. Here you can see the comparison where the Green Stuff World paint seems to coagulate into those recesses. Of course, this can be fixed with a second pass, but since there were paints on this list that didn't have these problems, I wanted to at least mention them. These paints are also a bit of a pain to get. They are only sold through Green Stuff World's website, and they took forever to get here. However, I did buy these during the pandemic, so the shipping was even longer than it usually is. Thoughts? If you have these paints already, I'm sure you will be happy. Do I recommend going out and buying them? No. However, Green Stuff World has so many amazing and unique products that if you are looking to pad your cart, these wouldn't be a mistake to buy. UV resin, Green Stuff rolling pins, foliage. Green Stuff World has basically every single thing you need to hobby. 
except for the miniatures. Let's take a moment to talk about this week's sponsor, Shield Wolf Miniatures. Shield Wolf Miniatures creates sci-fi and fantasy armies to storm the battlefield or explore untamed dungeons. Their latest Kickstarter, War is Coming Reinforcements, offers dozens of 28mm resin models to reinforce their pre-existing fantasy armies. This week, I'm painting the Valkyries, which are epic Nordic women warriors. What I really love about this Kickstarter is the really unique opportunity to build and create your own unique characters and armies. Each piece is beautifully sculpted, and the hardest part of assembling these models was just deciding what badass character I wanted to create next. Other factions include orcs and goblins, and creatures like dragons, wolves, and other epic beasts. If you like any of the models you've seen in this section of the video, be sure to check out Shield Wolf's Kickstarter, link in my description box. Alright, back to the video. Chimera Colors Chimera Colors is produced by Pegaso Models based in Italy. The base set includes 13 30 milliliter single pigment paints and one satin medium. Each individual paint costs $6.50 USD, while the base set costs about $70. These 13 original paints were scientifically chosen to create the widest range of colors when mixed. Pros These paints pack a huge punch. They are extremely thick and highly pigmented, meaning only a little bit goes a very long way. They thin down to a base, layer, or even glaze consistency without becoming grainy, and the high pigment count also makes these colors truly opaque and vibrant. The color you put onto your wet palette is the color you will get on your model. There are no surprises here. Each of the original 13 paints are single pigment, meaning you get exactly what you are expecting when mixing these colors. Many paints are created with a mix of different pigments and therefore don't always interact with each other as one would expect. These paints also come with a fantastic matte finish and their magenta is probably the best magenta I have ever used. Cons. There's absolutely no way to use these straight from the bottle. You either need to be confident in your ability to thin or be willing to learn. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a rather rude surprise. Second, the color range is pretty limited and therefore is not meant for armies. At the time of writing this, an expansion is being offered for pre-sale, but honestly, I found the colors less than thrilling. I love Chimera for their bold and vibrant colors, and this new release did not fill that desire for me. But no matter what, some color mixing is going to be required whenever you use Chimera paints. If you enjoy that, then perhaps it isn't a con, but I think the majority of people would agree with me for the preference of more interesting colors. These paints also have a very fast drying time. That can be great for speed painting, but it is a pain in the butt for wet blending and feathering, some of my favorite techniques. Lastly, these paints are almost impossible to get. I count my lucky stars that I was sent these by a fan. If you want them for yourself, good luck. My opinion. I love these paints and they are one I am constantly reaching for. I swear that having such pure pigmented paints have dramatically changed my painting style, as achieving vibrant colors has never been easier. However, I have a very extensive background in art, which I'm sure greatly impacts my opinion of these paints. I also paint display quality miniatures, not armies. Proacryl Proacryl paints are pigment-intense acrylic paint created by Monument Hobbies. The bottles are $4 a pop, with a box set ranging from $35 to $45. Each bottle contains 22 milliliters of paint and have a very interesting no-clog top. The brand offers a surprisingly large range of colors, so you are almost sure to find at least close to every color you desire. They also include finishes like metallic and transparent as well. Pros Pro Acryl paints are a great consistency right out of the bottle, requiring almost no thinning and therefore making them perfect for beginners. I was impressed with the intense pigmentation and green coverage, especially on colors I've had problems with before from other brands. For example, Pro Acryl's bright pale green versus the same color from Army Painter. Because of the gel consistency, these paints can be thinned down to a glaze a lot easier than many other paint brands. And they work perfectly with some of my favorite techniques like feathering and wet blending. These paints are decently easy to get as they are available on several hobby websites. Lastly, these paints dry to a matte finish, which is a personal preference of mine. Cons. 
I am not a fan of this top. It might be anti-clog, but it is not anti-mess. I suppose you can choose one or the other, clogs or wiping your paint lids clean. But this top is actually why I waited so long to try Pro Acryl at all. Overall, I love this paint. I am slightly heartbroken that I did not purchase a magenta or hot pink for this review, as a good magenta is always a badge of honor in my book. But I will definitely be ordering one from them soon after this video is recorded. In fact, I am seriously considering replacing a large chunk of my miniature paint collection with Pro Acryl paints. Personally, I wish it was a little thicker, more opaque, but that would make it less beginner friendly. Really, I just need Chimera and Pro Acryl to make a paint that is somewhere in the middle. That would be perfection. And as a last quick note, I must at least mention Pro Acryl's best color, Jade. What do you think of my paint analysis? Do you think I'm wrong? What paints do you recommend? If you like what I do, be sure to check me out on Patreon, Instagram, subscribe, like, and comment. It means the world to me to hear from you. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.